I V M. Hey everybody, quick request once again, if you could help us out by filling out our survey, it's at ivmpodcast.com slash survey. This really helps us talk to advertisers about the kinds of people listening to these shows. Really do appreciate your help and we're going to be doing a random drawing and we'll be sending out some IVM swag. Hope you enjoy that. Okay. okay. 2020. Okay. Welcome to 2021. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> let's just let's just be super passive aggressive to this year because because there is no other way to be like we just have to be really really wary of anything that that the year sort of uh, you know throws at us like the sun rises we should just like narrow our eyes and say what is this thing trying to do I think oh, that's Shunetra, you <laughs> have a good optimistic view on the world this yeah. early in the year well, I'm just prepping. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. How have you been? Uh, I've been okay. Uh, I have a bit of a cold today, so I don't know if I should be stressed out uh, that I have a cold. And, I mean, uh, what's the worst that could to happen? You can die. That's it. Yeah, but I don't know. Is this... See, I've had two, three COVID tests so far, and all of them have been like... Uh, they've not been to rule out COVID. They've always been to like, oh, I'm going to meet my father, so I need to get tested. They've been functional. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going on this set, so I have to get tested. Basically, that's the capacity in which I've got tested. But this is the first time I'm feeling like, wait, could this be COVID? But honestly, I had a great lunch. I could taste it. I don't know. Ah, yeah, I'm, so, I mean, this is normal paranoia. I'd yeah, and it's been such a weird, uh, the weather has been so weird, right? It's been the raining so in the morning. Lovely. I mean, I'm loving the weather. I'm I like it too. I like it too. I mean, uh, why can't why can't Bombay fucking be be like this throughout the year? God damn it! No, it can't. You can't have everything in life. <laughs> yeah, because Bombay gives us everything in life. Has yeah. it? To live by the sea and have a, like a chill weather. Let, let's not call that the sea. Like what we live. <laughs> Why is okay. it's a it's a please it's a poop roll like come on oh, no I'm 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 shockingly surprised by how clean our beaches are becoming though and uh, which is true, of, which is true which is yeah true. because I mean, of I, uh, Afro's shake I, I believe that's his name yeah I mean uh, yeah. I'm like I was uh, so I I, I think I, we discussed it last episode I I uh, ride to Juhu Beach every day and it became like a thing where I sit on the beach for like 10, 15 minutes every morning and it's nice. Like there was a point of time I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch the sand on Juhu Beach. Yeah, ew. Like yeah. ew. But it's, I know. It's, it's, they've cleaned it up. It's a nice space. There are a lot of little like dogs that I play with. No. You know, whenever I have had friends visiting and they're like, let's go to the beach. I, I've always been like, why the fuck? Exactly. exactly. Like my dad, I just don't get it. My dad keeps saying, uh, let's yeah. do the beach one day. I'm like, why? What is this uh, fascination? Unless but, you want diarrhea from Bhelpuri, that yeah. specific thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't see any reason to. Yeah. You know, can I, I tell you a quick funny anecdote from my life? Uh, when um, I had just moved to Bombay, yeah, uh, I wanted to play volleyball and I was all into, wow, I'm in Bombay and I want to do everything all the time. So I put up that time Facebook was new and I put up, hey, in one of those groups that where can I play volleyball? And someone told me you can go to Juhu Chapati and play. Uh, we play volleyball. Mm. Why don't you come play with us? So I went to Juhu Chapati on a Saturday morning at 8 a.m. to play volleyball. And the first serve, right, I want to impress these guys. Yeah. I did a solid dive. And I fell into the sand to show them that I'm a great volleyball player. Huh. And you won't believe it. When I dived, I was in the sand. I saw a syringe sticking out of Whoa. the sand. And I was like, okay, guys, bye, guys. Take care. Have fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were like, are, 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 just throw it on the side. Don't worry about it. It's very normal. And I was like, nope, not happening. Nope. Not happening. Well, that's our city. We yeah. love it. And love it for what it is. But yeah, coming to 2021. I mean, actually, let's look at, I mean, what, what got us through? I think one of the biggest boons uh, for 2020 was content. Mm-hmm. And, and like, I think we, for me, it was like a lifeline because watching stuff, listening to new things, uh, reading yeah. new books, that's mm-hmm. what got me through this entire year. And if there were a year that, that really could, uh, n- you know, that needed to sort of uh, almost pay obeisance to, Artists, this was the year, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Yeah, I mean, it's uh, why don't we why don't we talk about all the sure we we've, we've done a pop culture shit. roundup in the past. It was super popular. A lot of people loved yeah. it. Yeah, so we thought we should do another one. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, yeah, this is a great year to discuss all those things. Uh, speaking of Bombay, can I can I start? I I saw yeah yeah okay. I have an uncle who passed away. Yeah, uh, day before yesterday, uh, he was he was uh, suffering from a lot of things, and he's finally out of misery and all. Hmm. Basically, he was in this movie, okay, which I saw after years. Okay, hmm. uh, the name of the movie is Halo. I don't remember. It's a uh, Hindi. I don't yeah, know if yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, I remember. It's a Hindi movie. Yeah. Uh, and basically, just you know, I was remembering him, and I was like, oh my god, he was in that movie. Let me check out that movie. And I put it on, and Bombay looks so good in that movie. Mm. It's so lovely. Like it's, it's about a entirely. dog, right? Like little. Puppy. It's about a dog. It's about a yeah. little girl who loses her mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. she finds a dog, and uh, that girl is my second cousin, by the way. And her oh. father is the one who passed away in the movie. Oh, he's okay, a doctor, okay. Okay. but uh, basically, I just felt like. I had a vague memory of watching this on VCR. Yeah. I found an HD print on YouTube. Oh, wow. So I was like, let me watch it. And nice. I was blown away by how good Bombay looked in that movie. It's like, surprised, it, like it's, sometimes looking back, there are, there are films that really surprise you for how uh, aesthetically well done they are. It's amazing. Oh my God. Any Amol Palekar movie yeah, from the yeah. 60s, 70s, Sai yeah. Paranjpe movies. Hmm. Uh, so good. I just love watching the taxis and what people are yeah. wearing and uh, what, what traffic looked like back then. Uh, yeah. What people on the street were like. It, it's well, Halo, so soothing. Well, Halo is Santosh Sivan's film. So, I mean, Santosh Sivan is... I think I'm, it's Rajkumar Santoshi. I mean, uh, he, I think Santosh Sivan... Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't so, know the crew yeah, at so, all. Yeah, but I know it's a Rajkumar because he ah, plays her father in the movie. Got, yeah. got it. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. Like retreading old uh, memories and it's man, nice. I've seen so much. In fact, that's the thing. The, a large part of this conversation for me is going to be watching all the old stuff. I did a lot. Nice, of that this nice. Year. That's nice. Yeah. Did you have you been watching a lot? Of of course you have. But what are the things that stuck out for you this? Year? Um. Okay. So I. If I am talking about retreading old sort of things over here, mm-hmm. I went on a whole uh, this thing. What do you call it? A uh, Tarantino binge, and particularly my two favorite Tarantino films are Kill Bill One and Kill Bill Two. Uh, primarily because I love, I, I I know everyone goes for like you know uh, the usual like Pulp Fiction, and I love Pulp Fiction. But but for me, you give me a film with like a kick-ass like female character. And I'll watch, I think I've watched Kill Bill um, some seven or eight times over the course of the quarantine because it was just, uh-huh. it's just amazing. <laughs> and I love how, I love, I love how um, it's a pastiche of different, um, you know, inspirations. It's like watching yeah. a Tarantino mood board coming, coming to life, literally. Sure. Like sure. literally you see all his... Uh, you know how obs- uh, his obsession with westerns, his obsession with uh, with with Asian uh, uh, sort of martial arts yeah, films, yeah. everything comes yeah. alive. And I think in terms of revisiting, I think that was one of my one of my most uh, avid sort of revisits, so to say. Yeah. Um, now, there's a lot of. Can I tell you bo- something random? Uh, you know the sound in Kill Bill, the Kill Bill soundtrack, the doo, doo, like the giant yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. blaring ambulance. Yeah, yeah. It's so weird. In the past, whenever I've had anxiety attacks, like I'm in the throes of an anxiety attack, a lot of times uh-huh. I think of that tune. It's so weird. It's ingrained I mean, it's a, in my psyche. It's a, it's, it's a very fitting tune for anxiety. You know, <laughs> yeah. About that. yeah, you know, when you're suddenly breaking into a sweat yeah. and your chest is feeling tight and you're like, okay, is this a heart attack or I'm just feeling anxious? You know, yeah. okay, I'm making it sound like an ambulance. It's not, but like a siren. Yeah. I hear it every time I'm having an anxiety attack. That's and usually fun. I'm not able to think during an anxiety attack, but that yeah. tune plays. <laughs> well, I it's see. so weird. Uh, so we've all watched stuff that you know we've loved. Is there any mm. stuff that you anything that you watched new stuff that you watched which you felt was really overrated? Like not bad, but like r- superbly overrated. You thought, oh my god, everyone was expecting it to be amazing, but like, ye kya dekha uh, I, I I have to say. Uh, a lot of Netflix shows do that to me. Like they become really popular. 
And then I'm like, why is this thing popular? That happens to me, especially with Netflix shows. Yeah. This uh, year, what I'll give you an example. Uh, and I might get a little flack for saying this, but Dark is one example. Uh, I like Dark. I, I love the sound design. <laughs> so I know, I know, I know, I know. It's a big, there's <laughs> divided this. Uh, yeah. And I know I'm on the lesser side because a lot of people love that show. And here's the deal. I appreciate the show for its technical brilliance in terms mm. of like, but I couldn't help but think it was very contrived and convoluted and like unnecessarily complex. And uh, I, I don't know, a lot of Netflix, see, there are the obvious bad shows, which are Riverdale, for example. Yeah, yeah that, too, why. that too, we are not even talking about. Yeah, like, but they're so popular. These shows really have huge yeah, but- followings. Yeah, so I, I think I'll come to that. I think this year has also been like the emergence I, and not just emergence. I think, I think the cementing of the importance of trash TV, because I think there's yeah. a, a, a in, we've realized that no matter yeah. how much snobbery we kind of inculcate, there is a part of us that also loves to watch at the end of the day, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And Dude, I'm, I'm so happy unfair. you said that. Because if I had to actually boil down the maximum amount of time I spent watching a certain thing, it has to be the Real Housewives. Yes, which exactly. I just, it's the perfect show to watch because you don't have to focus. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can be on your phone. That's a genre in itself. TV mm. shows where you can be on your phone while they are playing so that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You don't have to focus. And I've seen so many, I saw now I'm watching Poromac, Poromac, but I've seen Beverly Hills. I saw New yeah, York. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah. I'm constantly questioning, why am I watching this? You know? But that's but, the thing. I mean, we, we this year, I think everyone's become ap- unapologetic about watching whatever gives them pleasure. And I yeah. think, I think that judgment, you know, the, 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 the judgmentality was, yeah. has completely gone out of the window. The, who, yeah. who the fuck cares? Who, I mean, if it's giving me pleasure, please yeah. go, go ahead, watch it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and uh, yeah, like I, 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 for one have had a number of these like guilty pleasure watches, like binges on, yeah. All these Real Housewives, Kardashians, and yeah. and uh, it's really fun to watch like people go crazy. Now the only time you look at it is when there's some fight breaking out, and you're like, yeah. okay, now something's gonna happen. Let yeah. me watch they'll it. say something, and they'll you know there will be like this dramatic music. Okay, but no, I want you to tell me. I say if I had to, let's start from here. What's the best thing you saw? What's the first thing that comes to your mind this year? What's the best thing? It literally shook your Cool. Uh, Black is King. Oh, okay. I've not watched I, it yet. It is. So I, I'm, I'm a trained like classical dancer. I used to dance in the past. And as a result of that, I grew up doing a lot of shows and, and crafting a lot of dance dramas and like theatrical mm-hmm. performances. There, this is like what I want wanted Lion King to be, and and for anyone who's not watched Black is King, it's it's a it's a musical film. It's mm. like a um, it's Beyonce. like um, it's Beyonce's version of what um, Lion the Lion King is, except that the Lion King is um, is a is a story about uh, an African kid who runs away. It's not a line anymore. It's 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 humans over here, and the costumes, the art, the way it's shot, it's just a marvel to look at, to listen to. It's a sensory explosion, which I yeah. I think it's a it's it's definitely. If I had to pick one, like I remember, I I started watching it and I was wrapped with attention. Like I couldn't, I I, I my eyes were glued. I couldn't pry my eyes away from the screen. It was so beautiful. Anyone who hasn't watched it, please do. Because it's like watching uh, the best music videos of the decade in one hour. Like, together. One after another. It's fucking fantastic. It's, it's not something we need to recommend because everybody's into Beyonce. If you're not, you yeah, but no, so, I mean, people, right <laughs> no, but people, people are into Beyonce. It's just that I don't think yeah. people have, a lot of people in India That's have watched Black, Black is King. Like, they haven't watched yeah. Uh, this film because it is it is an art it's not it is esoteric a, a very a very esoteric sort of uh, journey it's not a it's not a fun like it's not you know yeah. it's not her usual bop yeah, yeah you know so yeah what about you man um 
again, if I had to, I can't say just one thing. There are so many things, but but if there was, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Shit's Creek. Shit's Creek. Oh. I saw Shit's Creek for the first time this year, and oh, I saw okay. it in the thick of the lockdown because that's just I, the I, best I, thing to watch during the lockdown. I know I had attempted it so many times. I did not like the show, but somehow it clicked during the mm. lockdown. Mm. Because I was like, okay, I need to understand why this show is becoming so popular and so like. And constantly people take me for that. You love this show. You love this show. I, it was one of those shows where people actually convinced me and wore me mm. down to watch. Otherwise, I would have never watched it. Speak, mm. No matter how popular it got. Got it. Uh, but when it clicked, it really stayed. And in fact, I recently purchased a brand new TV and I've been re-watching Shit Creek. <laughs> and now I love it from the first episode. It's ah. not like... You know, everyone usually says, oh, pehla do season thoda ye hai, then it gets amazing. I hate it when people tell me that. Because why would I waste two seasons worth of time uh, yeah. to see something that gets good later? Yeah. But uh, I think Shit's Creek, I just, it was a show that I misunderstood and it's on me. I mm. I literally feel like that's, that's the mark for me, how good the show is. Because yeah. it made me immediately question, how did you not like this, Farad? Mm. You're so stupid. Hmm. Uh, I loved it again in terms of representation everything of it was just outstanding of course of course and so comforting it was so comforting and it it is not the funniest show I've watched this year for sure but yeah it was just I felt like it was a little piece of home to like in all the madness that was going on yeah I couldn't help but constantly feel like Shit's Creek time was personal you know like yeah. No, and and, and it also was uh, one of the best, most comforting finales because it, it just this year, this I mean, it 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 came to an end, and it was almost like yeah. this beautiful closure, and yeah. and to cap it off with like the numerous Emmys that it won. Yeah. I was yeah. so yeah. so happy, so happy for the show and the team, and it was. You know, I'm so happy we live short. in a time where shows are getting self-aware of when yes. to end. Yes. I think Breaking Bad is the first show that started that. I time, agree. Honestly. I ag- and, uh, agree. To pers- and like even a lot good, of times in even the good place. Even the good, good place. place yeah, like absolutely. Ended exactly at the right time. And, and a lot don't of times when you see their interviews, they are asked, why are you ending it when it just starts getting popular? Especially Shit Creek, right? When people yeah. actually started realizing the greatness of the show is when they announced that yeah. they're ending. And there are, they always have such a good answer for it nowadays where why do you yeah. want to ruin something I think Game of Thrones changed and brought that Completely. about you know where people I mean, were like, uh, just like Game of Thrones there were so many things that went wrong towards the end I yeah, think they, yeah. first and foremost they deviated so much the, I, I, I'm 100% sure when the books uh, are released that's when people will get proper closure because mm what worked was the very gritty storytelling that worked yeah. for the first few seasons. And then yeah. towards the end, then it, when, when they started straying from the books, because there were no books to refer to, yeah. it started becoming fans service. Like, you know, they were yeah. almost too scared of doing something different, doing yeah. something and being true to the, 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 the theme of game of Thrones. And I, that's something that I just, yeah. Yeah. By but the way, uh, I've only seen one season of Game of Thrones uh, back then and I never got into it. Uh, I, oh, I, 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 huge... I, uh, I like, honestly, for me, uh, season, barring season eight, everything about Game of Thrones is just spectacular. Like, I, uh-huh. I no, 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 no. Again, it's, I've saved it as a new TV viewing thing. Ah, that yeah. Once I'm settled into Pune, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get yeah. a solid binge to Game of Thrones at some right. point. Even right. though I know everyone's. I don't know what the ending is, but I know not to expect much from it. So it makes me feel like, why am I going to watch it anyways? If it yeah. has a shitty end. But I guess for the journey, I'll see it for the journey. Instead yeah, of yeah. Chasing. Yeah. Yeah. And there are yes. turns, twists and turns. So yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of also again, satisfying finales, uh, contrary to your opinion, I felt dark was such a dark also ended at in such a great moment. And like it, it was just the right time. And for me, the expansion was not for me, it wasn't a gimmick. The expansion of, you know, universes was not a gimmick. It just worked for me. Like, you know, from mm. season one to season two to season three and yeah. three seasons in totality, when you look, look at it from a, a, an eagle's eye point of view, uh, yeah. for me, Dark is easily 
one of the most beautifully well rounded crafted uh, well crafted technically brilliant well written shows yeah. in in my lifetime like i yeah i i it will remain honestly i felt it had the best sound design i've seen in the no, longest time i, I sound, what about of- what about casting i mean oh my god the kid yeah. versions and the and the old versions they yeah. fucking look like each other like it's amazing yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, Dark was another uh, sort of show which, and you know what, I I like being challenged by shows, and you know there is a part of me that of course loves uh, easy viewing and stuff like that. But Dark yeah. challenges you, you know. Dark, do mm. you know what? I'm there for you only if you're there for me, and I mm. like shows like that. I like cinema like that that demands yeah. your attention and then pays you back because there yeah. is the payoff. So I love that about. I think after a long time. this was show that kind of uh, really really uh, demanded your attention and commanded yeah. so i i that yeah. happens to be another of those you know speaking of challenging uh and i'm so happy this was the last movie i saw hmm. on 31st december i saw this movie uh was soul oh I, my god yeah i thought i thought a straight up i thought it's the best pixar movie ever within within like an hour i was like okay this might be one of the best movies pixar's done and by the end i was like yep this is the best movie pixar's ever made no uh, i don't think I it's the found... best movie to be honest but it okay. is up there I, I, in again, the top five i know people whose favorite uh, uh, pixar movies up so i know everybody has their little favorites and to each their own please love yeah, up yeah. as much as you want it's my least favorite pixar movie uh but uh I I thought like in terms of what the movie tackles hmm. it was yeah uh, so yeah I'll tell you what happened with me was uh, inside out if someone asked me which is your favorite uh, pixar movie I would always say inside out because hmm. that was a movie that made me wish that I had seen as a child so I would have probably been a more rounded individual growing up if I had that mindset or yeah. if that's how I processed feelings yeah I thought first of all Pixar totally departed from this oh we still make movies for kids even though in a way soul is obviously for kids even but I felt like this time they went straight for the adult jugular mm-hmm. yeah like hey this is not like a small movie it co- the concepts it deals with in terms yeah. of like existentialism purpose yeah. there's so much conversation about purpose and having a purpose or not having a purpose yeah. and what made the movie so brilliant is whether you think life should have a purpose and we should all live or life has no purpose and it's pointless to find one you it know what what to both audiences me, at the same time what struck me was that beautiful you know conundrum that we end up uh, with is is our work a purpose or is Absolutely. feeling good a purpose yeah, and i think yeah. that's such a beautiful message especially yeah. in in times like this where everyone is sort of questioning what what life yeah. means to them i think sure. it was and and for me i think if, if you know we we would have come to music but yeah for me souls you know uh soul was yeah. music was the score and oh, and for stunning the there was best that score this year happens to be from that film best yeah and you know i i was watching it with my best friend and obviously i'm trying to keep it together because I, I you're not human if you did not cry during soul. Oh my god. Either you were too bored or you were not tuned in enough to yeah, do, like definitely. if you did not cry during soul. But you know I constantly by mid uh, by uh, by the time you know half of the movie was over we were in hmm. I constantly kept thinking like Farah do not cry you because I felt like I was going to ugly cry. That's how hmm. amazing the movie kept getting. Yeah. And even like the way it touched on spirituality on the concept of lost souls what are lost souls and you know i was blown away by how they were saying such big life concepts yeah. in such sweeping easy ways and yeah, especially yeah. communicating that to children amazing but uh, when the montage scene happens and he plays the piano yeah i literally looked to my left uh, to my right I, i looked at my friend and i was like i'm so sorry and i burst out crying and uh, you know what made it such a beautiful movie in such a stupid way is 
my I've known my best friend for like 10 years, 13 years. Hmm. I have never seen his eyes even moist. But when that hmm. movie ended, I looked at him and his cheeks were wet. And in that sense, I was like, oh, okay, this movie must have done something. And hmm. so much so, can I tell you, on the 1st of Jan, I was like, yeah, maybe you made a big deal out of the movie. Maybe, you know, sometimes we do that. Yeah, like, yeah. You really make such a big deal out of the movie. And when you rewatch it, you're like, holy shit, why did I like this movie so much? So I saw it again on the first <laughs> and I cried just as much. I cried just as much. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is, this movie is fantastic. Nice. I, oh man, it really hit all the spots. And uh, I started my year with watching Coco and Soul back to back. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because one reminds me of my father a lot because of mm. the dementia angle. Mm. And the other was, uh, Soul was just, it was literally like, Balm for my soul. I it is know. beautiful. It was a beautiful experience, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah, that's so well, Pixar. I think we should take a quick break. Yeah, yeah. Before yep. we come back and talk about other things we've consumed this year. Yeah. See you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So everybody, please do help us out with our survey if you haven't filled it out yet. It's on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. This survey is really helpful for us. And, you know, fill out the survey completely and uh, we'll put you into a lucky draw and we will send you some IVM swag. And what a great week of episodes we had and what an eventful week we had. Let me run through some of the episode highlights really quickly. On Tessa Vesa, Samir Nair of Applause Entertainment was on to discuss the web series Scam 1992. Great conversation with Anupam was had. Do check that out. Bhavish Sumaya of Hasbro was on Advertising is Dead. On Positively Unlimited, Chitna is starting a new series from A to Z. This week, a line. Do check that out. And on GBCD, Farhad and Sunetra asked the question, what if they were straight? Interesting conversation. Definitely do check that out. I think you'll enjoy that. And one piece of news for you guys. Cyrus Says is now live on YouTube every weekday at 10 a.m. If you go to our IVM podcast YouTube channel, you'll be able to catch us over there. And stay tuned for a lot more video content coming out in the next couple of weeks. And with that, let me get you back to your show. We're back. And yep. so while we're talking about all, all this, all the lovely stuff that we've consumed, yes. why don't we talk about some of the some of the shit that was traumatic? Like it was traumatic in in the funny sense. Like it was so bad. Go for it. Start. Why don't you start? The Razzies. <laughs> okay. I think the funniest, the wor- not the funniest, but the worst thing that we saw was the two month comedy show that started on election day in the US and which ended the yesterday. Elections. Oh my God, the oh US my. elections that, that ended finally yesterday. Yeah. And I think, I, I, I mean, till the 20th of Jan, you, we don't know what that lunatic yeah. will, will do. Yeah. But oh my motherfucking Lord God, what the hell? Yeah. I barely slept that entire week. I barely, because all the action was happening in the day, which is night for us. So I was like, I'm not going to miss this. I'm not going to miss this. So literally, till till Biden reached the 20 count, I didn't sleep. And it was the most traumatic, weird, funny, oscillating, anxiety-ridden time. I, it was, I, I don't know if any of that was real. I think all of that was like a social experiment. I still think that it's a social experiment. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it, it was it just so ridiculous. so crazy. You really question the planet. Over. Oh my God. And yeah. If you are the only person, you know, there's a term in psychology for that, where you feel everything. I don't know if you ever felt this, but when I was growing up, I constantly felt like, oh, my parents are not actually my parents. They've been put to like constantly test and <laughs> see how I would react in this situation. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Yeah, I live, uh, and there's a term I'm forgetting for it right now, but for people who live like that constantly, mm. oh, my brother is doing this because he actually wants to see if I respond like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's very stupid. Uh, the US elections were terrifying. Uh, <laughs> they, whatever happened in India was also fucking Oh terrifying. my, that, see, I, when it's, when it's, so when it's something that's closer to you, it mm. stops becoming, how do I put it? How do I put it in a, in a, in a sensitive way? It stops becoming, um, it becomes personal. 
and yeah. at least with the us elections and i'm only talking about the us elections i'm not talking about the black lives matters mm-hmm. uh, sort of movement the elections were we were outsiders and and from yeah. outside in what was what was transpiring was was stuff that and you could see, you can see parallels like you know what's happening in our country and mm-hmm. and the kind of madness that's happening the kind of the ignorance like willful ignorance that that exists within people and that for me was just like wow what times do we live in how are we devolving as a generation how are we devolving as a species um yeah i think that was my pick what was yours the worst uh, shit that you watched it's not political but uh <laughs> tenet that's absolutely was- fine Yeah, uh, Tenet was actually one of oh the my god! I'm I'm so glad you said that. I'm so glad you said that. Tell yeah. me, tell me why you didn't like it? Uh, because not only was it, it was genuinely a bad movie. You know, a lot of times yeah. when you watch a Christopher Nolan movie, hmm. you can't help but think, okay, maybe I am the stupid one. Me ko nahi samjha and mm-hmm. all of that. But yeah. this time, my problem wasn't even not being able to understand the concept. It was just. such terrible sound design such mm. terrible like it's just glaring stupid dialogues and mm. shit like i know instantly i knew instantly that if i see this on a month it won't age well we will only in a couple mm. of years you know um, yeah, i was yeah. honestly just rooting for dimple kapadia <laughs> like Nothing wow yeah. woohoo dimple kapadia but she's okay. you know what see, bothered right? me about the film what bothered yeah. me about the film was yeah. i see every nolan film has this um uh like a like a almost a marketing gimmick line almost you know like where where in inception it was that time within time within time and the slow motion sequences and the and non gravity sequences and things like that with dunkirk it was just this like endless like one one endless sort of film uh like chase sequence almost here the whole idea of rewind chases I just I've seen that before. That's the that's what pissed me off because I've seen that in Doc, Doctor Strange. I've seen that in in so many so Do many films. Right? I'm I, sure you're like, what did you think? Like, first of all, I was like, wait, is this set in today's times or in some other time? Because why is everyone wearing <laughs> such baggy and old, like stupid clothes in this? Yeah. Time? Except that the main guy, the lead actor. Uh, hmm. I was like, Robert Pattinson. Why is he dressed in a three times? So dull. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I I couldn't understand what the yeah, fuck was, was going on. And was I really just like waded through it, and I was like, okay, this is a movie I'm never going to watch again. Uh, at least, also, you know, also, I, I, I was like, okay, let me give it another go because maybe I've not understood the concept, and hmm. right enough, it helps. You know, a stick in you. You know, even hmm. Interstellar, uh, whatever. Even yeah, though yeah. Interstellar also is a little cringy to watch now, uh, because love, uh, <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeah, I just, I just instantly knew there were uh, ten. Another, another thing that I shit. feel Christopher Nolan has a big problem with is why are his, fe- why are such few female characters strong, strong in his film, in his films? Uh-huh. Why are such few characters like you can just pick them, like you can count them on on their fingers? So yeah, yeah I mean, Tenet, I completely agree. I actually also didn't like uh, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Oh, uh, I started it, and I was like, "Okay." The thing is, I've not seen one, the first one, hmm. so and somehow I ended up. Sta- I started watching the second one, and I wasn't feeling it at all. Hmm. Like, uh, no, not happening. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. For me, if it's a superhero film in any way, like if it's a superhero or fantasy or anything, hmm. I need to be cued in, or the story needs to be stellar. Like. I mm. always, you know, a lot of people, a lot of my friends were anti Marvel, anti DC. They're like, oh, they just don't watch those brand of films. Mm-hmm. Okay, I feel somewhere it is my responsibility to let them know that they are right. Do not watch all those films, but please watch Avengers: Infinity War. Please watch Endgame. Mm. Please watch uh, mm. Thor: Ragnarok. Mm. Great fucking film, you know. Yeah. But. What is shit is shit. I get it. Like yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe skip Spider Man Homecoming or mm. whatever it is. You know, like skip that. It's fine. But uh, yeah. Oh no. I I have a very specific. Actually, I'm a, I'm a sucker for Guardians of the Galaxy. A little. I don't know. I I love that <laughs> franchise. I mean, it's it's cute. It's, it's cute. Yeah. It's got its own it's vibe, fun. even though it's yeah. in the same space and travel. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know. 
a Mandalorian hi well that yeah. is a technical marvel and let's not forget that music like oh my yeah. god yeah. and yeah. and the the finale the second season finale so can i tell you something i only seen five episodes of uh, mandalorian i still oh. I, I just started it recently okay but i already again i'm not a big star wars fan a lot of people mm-hmm. i know are like yeah i don't like star trek star wars so fuck that shit mm. but I'm quite into it. Like, wow! I'm really invested. Like, what is happening? It's, it's hmm. very. Uh, um, I saw Werner Herzog in the first episode, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah. I knew it. Like, easy. Uh, speaking of, by any chance, have you watched Orville? Sorry. Orville, Seth MacFarlane. Yes, show. I have. Yes, I have. Yeah. So the thing I is. Just, so here's the thing. Like, I started watching it and I stopped watching it because. Yeah. It's not like I hate it. It's just that I'm a, I'm a like I watch Star Trek, uh, Picard oh, yeah. and Star Trek Discovery religiously. Yeah. So for me, it's like watching like I don't know. Maybe I'll pick up like it's one of those things I will sort of you know start watching maybe sometime later. Sure. Uh, yeah, but I I just haven't gotten to it. Like it's it's nice. No, I tell you why. It's uh, again it stuck out for me is because very rare. Every do I feel like oh critiques are not always right, mm. you know? And mm. if you go to a Rotten Tomatoes, Orwell has a ten to thirteen percent rating, which is terrible. Mm. But suddenly, when second season starts, it's got a ninety nine percent rating. Wow! And okay. It made me inquisitive that how can a show make such a jump? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. So in that sense, I started watching it, and I totally get it why it has the potential to become a huge show, mm. uh, even though. I am done. Uh, honestly, Family Guy was one thing I started watching recently, and I've been thoroughly enjoying. Even yeah. though I stopped at season eight, and now it's on season nineteen. For that, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I feel like it has it has like some sort of great concepts and great sci-fi concepts happening in it. And hmm. It's surprisingly good. Uh, but, but okay, there has there been honorable any- mentions? No, like no, uh, I, no. So I want to ask you something. Has there been anything that you watched which has Completely surprised you, and like you weren't expecting it to be this good, but like it turned out to be really heartwarming. Like I, I'll give you my 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 pick. Okay, sure. I had no idea. Uh, I hadn't read anything about Palm Springs when it when I. Oh um, yeah. And and that time, uh, I just had some knowledge of you know the the praise coming from Sundance, but yeah, but nothing more than that. Yeah. And then I watched it, and it was such a good. And it was, I think, Palm Springs is the perfect uh, quarantine, you know, watch. Yeah. <laughs> because because it, it you're in the same sort of position over there, right? yeah. and and yeah. It, it, and and you know, and the reason I really loved it is because again, the reason you were talking about shit. How non-judgmental it is about gender yeah. and identity. Yeah. Even Palm Springs, like there are these, and it it doesn't do it like on the nose. It just throws it in as part of who. who and I'm not going to spoil anything for people, mm. but there are like there is queer representation that is very chill, very relaxed. Like it's not even it's non-judgmental completely. So yeah. that was one one thing that I was just truly truly blissed out by. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was uh, so. I'll tell you, with with me to me to happening and all, there's suddenly a state of like, oh, shows where someone is either wrongly accused or mm. someone is like accused, and you know, a lot of shows mm. happen. Even the new Nicole Kidman show with you, Grant, who's which mm. uh, the name I forget of the show. I just saw it was okay. Uh, again, love mm. the show, but the undoing, yeah, the undoing, but uh. Uh, what I felt I wouldn't like because it's in that zone only where it's just going to say the same story in a different way, but turned out to be incredibly good was I May Destroy You on Hot Star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, fantastic. I felt like, uh, again, in terms of sexuality and what it had to say about consent, like mm. it was insanely good. Like I couldn't believe a show could with such precision tackle yeah. the topic and yeah. sort of define because again, a lot of times when we hear about 
sexual assaults and the Me Too movement and everything, every time it comes across is the lines are so blurred, right? So who's right? Like when an Aziz Ansari thing happens and a Louis C.K., there mm. are always like uh, the perpetrator versus the victim, who is the more, who's more the victim, who's more the perpetrator. That kind of debate happens a lot of times. I'm, mm. I'm not pro any side. I'm just trying yeah, to say yeah, that yeah. there is always a debate that shows up that, you know, why didn't she do this? Why didn't she report mm. it before? Why was yeah. he, why did he not know that no means no? You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. those kind of things. I felt like I may destroy you. Yeah, beautifully illuminated those yeah. problems yeah. and kind of gave you a clear answer what is wrong what is wrong actually there was no yeah. right there like no what right. is wrong is wrong you know yeah. Uh, yeah. I felt like it was beautifully done it, it is was beautifully done and Completely in terms beautiful. of the messaging again uh, outstanding I just yeah. I just uh, felt really like overwhelmed by how good it turned out to be so that was one show I was expecting to not like yeah uh, but I really loved Uh, yeah yeah. I mean like last Uh, let's let's just uh, two honorable mentions from your end two honorable mentions from my end just quick sure uh, sure. Dick Johnson is dead on Netflix Uh, (laughs) okay uh, yeah I uh, you you are on my Instagram. A lot of people on uh, who listen to the show and have come onto my Instagram because of GBCD or whatever. A lot of them for years, uh, not for years, but a lot of people love my father through my Instagram. Mm-hmm. They don't know him personally. Yeah. Uh, because I constantly film my father mm. in every way I can. Whether he's sleeping, whether he's eating something, whether he's enjoying his chai. I just constantly love capturing my father mm. on film because yeah. I have this crazy feeling that someday I won't have this time with him. So mm. I can sort of, it's sad, but you know what I mean? That I'll watch this then to fill that void mm. that I'll feel once yeah, he leaves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dick Johnson is dead kind of uh, instantly made me realize what I should be doing with all this footage that I have Mm. of him. Uh, It was uh, amazing. uh, One of the best dementia Alzheimer's films I've seen. Uh, And there was a very small movie, which a lot of people have not heard, but uh, called Sorry We Missed You. Hmm. Uh, Have you watched it by any chance? No, I haven't. Okay. uh, I guarantee you, it's not only one of the best films that came out this year, Hmm. but you will always forever have mad respect for every Swiggy, Amazon, every delivery you get at your house. The protagonist is a delivery man who's going through a tough time in life. It's a beautiful Mm -hmm. film. Beautiful. Sorry, we missed you. Those are two huge stick out like uh, films for me. Okay. Um, Well, for me, one of them was... uh, uh, the old guard. Uh, oh my it, god! Yeah, I watched it, it because it, you recommended it. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it's everything that I wanted a superhero of yeah. film to be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I won't even give more details. And the other yeah. other thing that I just want to leave everyone with is watch Hamilton on Hotstar. Everyone oh watch god. Hamilton. It I is, still have to. It is just it. You understand why it's a masterpiece when you watch it. Like it is. Uh, yeah, like I, it's 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 the real deal. Like it's beautifully. It is uh, um, barely has. Uh, it's been a while since a musical has mm-hmm. been a sign of our times. Like it's been, uh, it's cut through pop culture so beautifully mm-hmm. that it has become part of pop culture, and yeah. that's what Hamilton's done. So I think these two are my uh, sort of honorable mentions for Amazing. all you queers out there. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we're well, nearing the end. We've, yes. We we should do another where less movies, TV shows, more books, video games. Yeah, so yeah. much. There's so much to consume. Absolutely. Okay. We should uh, totally do that. Yeah. Till then, I think uh, please take care Until of yourself. Time. Let's let's uh, look. Uh, let's be cautious, but like be positive this year. So yeah, happy. Do not go on any gay year. cruises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> and, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I uh, wish everyone a great year, man. And you, Shmitra. Yep. And you too. Have a, have yep. A great fucking year. All right. We'll see you next time. All Love right. Bye. 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 Hey, I'm Zarina, your peak performance coach, leadership coach, and life coach. And I'm here to unleash that power within you. 
with your weekly dose of mantras and empowerment. Tune in to Monday Mantras every Monday for your quick fix and the empowering series with Zarina Poonawala every Thursday for riveting real life stories. You can catch us on the IBM podcast website, app or wherever you get your podcast from. Whether you're an established sports person or a budding one or simply a sports enthusiast, join us Tanvi and Shlok. We are two passionate pro badminton players talking policy, mindset and everything sport. So tune in to the Millennial Athlete every Monday only on the IBM Podcast Network. Trust us, it's going to be lit.